Good morning, camera. I almost forgot about uh, you. We are back on the road, on the road to Land's End. After a lovely stay with our friends, we've had a day's rest at a friend of ours, friends of ours, Chris and Pete, which was wonderful. We've had a couple of lovely breakfasts. And today we are setting off again on the walk. We are not far from uh, Holt Whistle. Their village is, is near Holt Whistle. And that was our last stop. And we're now heading down to Alston on an old uh, unused railway trek. I'm not sure if this is actually railway at the moment, but quite a bit of it runs alongside um, where there used to be rail. Now, you'll see there, we just walked out of the sun into the, into the shade. It's bitterly cold today. It really feels like winter is taking a hold, even though it's only sort of the early part of autumn. And I don't know, I, I think we both feel strong, but at the same time, we are feeling a bit uh, wary about this cold weather. Um, I know we could walk as far as Land's End and beyond. And I think we will. Do you think we will, Michelle? Yeah, I think we will. So it's just the, the weather, you know, will it be in our favour? But uh, we'll try. But that's the big question. It's, it's, it's whether we have, we're not fully kitted. A lot of people tell us you haven't got the right gear for winter walking in England, and we know that. But we haven't got uh, bottomless pits for pockets either to just keep buying all the highest quality hiking gear. Uh, remember, we've not, uh, we arrived here in the UK with, with no hiking gear. I'll let Michelle get the gate this time. Uh, no hiking gear at all, so we've had to get everything. And uh, it gets expensive. But we, f we feel that our gear that we currently have has done us quite well. Whether or not it will be suitable for the continuing winter months, uh, that story we'll have to see. And can you trust that you won't blow away in the wind? Um, there's, this is a public right away, but it's also crossing through quite a bit of boggy farmland, um, which you can see is pretty mucky. Um, and not particularly suitable for all walking. About four or five sheepdog, working dogs in cages there. I know they're working dogs. I, I hope they have a better life than just living in a cage. Um, you tend to think of the farmer coming home at night, putting the log fire on and the dog cozying up around the fire waiting for the following morning but in reality perhaps <laughs> they come home after a hard work with the sheep and end up in a wooden box well fed well cared for i'm sure there's a donkey over there but uh it's not something i like to see wind guys wind cold biting winter wind you can hear it, it sounds like an aeroplane passing by as it blows through the air. Land's End to John O'Groats is not meant to be a weather trial. G'day. meant to be a walk endurance walk that's why people do it in the spring and summer and not through into the winter months why couldn't this country just have a slightly late summer a little burst of summer sunshine anything but this horrendous early winterfell weather so this walk is the Pennine journey not the Pennine way Maybe in the summertime. At the moment, it's just a, a boggy sort of trench of damp, boggy fields. And uh, we're coming this way particularly to see a viaduct, a very impressive viaduct. I hope it's worth it. So we're coming down some pretty steep steps now. 
and I can see the viaduct ahead of me. Now apparently this family bought this house here or somebody bought this house and sometime soon after they made this a private road. You used to be able to walk along here and go onto the viaduct level. But the family thought it was a good way to block it. So now what happens is everybody has to go all the way down and you can see ahead the size of the viaduct. Apparently you have to go down and find your way around and climb up some steps. So we'll, we'll do it anyway. But I just think that's a mean, mean spirited thing to do. What did they need to do that for? So here is the viaduct, there's the first arch, second arch. And we climb on these old raw iron steps until, oh, okay. So that's also a fence they put up to stop people coming that way. Anyway, it is what it is. The Lamley Viaduct, designed by George Barclay Bruce, engineer, for Newcastle and Carwell Railway to Holt Whistle Station and Alston. And that is the piece of land that these people want to keep everybody off of. I'm sure it's nothing more than something to cut their some part to cut their lawn. So again, I, I think it's wrong, but uh, it is what it is. So let's have a look. Wow. So look at this. Very hard actually to get a good view of this viaduct from on top of it, but I'm glad we've come up. Go and look in the valley on the other side. So this is the, the River Tyne. Newcastle upon Tyne, Tyneside, the very famous River Tyne. And this is the viaduct. And this is me. Look at these lovely stones. Well, there's a little small bridge down there for people to cross. It looks like both ends of the viaduct have been blocked off by, by landowners now. It's the way of things. It's the lovely modern modernity of life, eh? I cannot see an obvious walkway. <laughs> Michelle and I are meant to be following the riverside, but I can't see an obvious walkway. That's a little bit worrying. Okay, we're gonna climb down and look for our next route. Oh, these staircases. They're killers. Big steps, heavy packs. Little legs, <laughs> for me. I need to use my hand on the rail. I think it'll help a little bit on this. I hope this whole trail is not like this. Today's... It, it won't talk for four hours, the GPS. And I will pick up the camera and film and it always talks. Sometimes it won't talk for realistically close to an hour. And we haven't even got, there's no change in direction. So, anyway, it's been all, an odd day today since we left Chris and Pete's on our rest day. We're, we're both still feeling our feet quite hard and we're really struggling with the water again. We're starting to think it's time to maybe change some of our gear out or give up, you know. So it's, it, it's a pivotal, pivotal time uh, for us on the trail. It's either, I think, either a change of gear or a change of venue. 
very hard to say which at the moment. I'll be honest, we, we both really want to give up and we both really want to carry on. It, it's a sort of juxtaposition, I know, but it's, it's hard to explain. There are so many reasons why we still want to do. We're, we're approximately halfway on this walk. Um, and there's a lot of good reasons to stop with the winter coming in and the weather getting worse. There's a lot of good reasons to carry on. But just today, our feet and our bodies are really struggling, which they barely have done um, since we started this walk. It's as if they're, they're reminding us just how harsh the walking is. Um, and I don't think that would be a reason, a good reason for us to, to stop the walk. It certainly wouldn't be for, for pain. It wouldn't be for sore feet. Um, uh, it, we wouldn't be stopping because we couldn't do the physical walking. Uh, it most likely would just be the grim, miserable weather that uh, Britain is throwing at us. It's weather you've got to remember. I mean, Michelle and I originally did come from the UK, but it's close to really nearly 30 years since we've lived in this sort of climate and um, we're used to more tropical and warmer weather and even oh, I don't know what well, do you want to add anything to that Michelle? No I think we've covered everything. <laughs> we're tired our feet are tired uh, that's because we've done a big walk today it's another big walk um, and we're confused so watch this space. This is Slaggyford station. Now you can see it's a very narrow gauge. Uh, people called it a, a toy train, but I think it's just a, a little tourist train, but it's not running. Hasn't been running for months. Um, or the COVID, <sighs> the COVID. But look, it's got the, The rail changes, the direction changes. I'm not sure what they're called. Put the name down, it's got a little signal up the front here. And uh, I imagine it's, it's probably a steam train. I'm not 100% sure, but I know it's a tourist train. I think it runs all the way from here, from Slaggyford into Alston, which is our, uh, our next destination. Probably not today, but tomorrow morning. Interesting. Great shame the little train is not running. That would have been cool to see. It's very odd, the stories you hear. We, we met a guy, oh, maybe an hour or two back, and uh, he told us about this pathway alongside the train. We already knew about it, but he said, dreadful little pathway. They've left a tiny little narrow path next to the train and cut down all the trees, so it's boring. I don't understand it. I, I'm suspecting now he's never walked down here in his life. And just hearsay, sort of moaning that goes around often with newspaper articles saying maybe back in the day, they destroyed a footpath in order to put this delightful little train in. Um, maybe cut down a few trees or something. But Michelle and I were just saying, this is a really good path. It's not super wide, but it's wide enough for two if you wanted, and certainly wide enough for us to stroll down. And uh, I can see no signs anywhere of any trees that have been cut down. Now, I can only assume he, he's never walked along here and it is just that sort of hearsay that you get from newspaper articles and gossip when these things are first erected, you know. Train track, toy train track, destroys woodland, takes over old established route. What a lot of nonsense. People are so inclined to moan. And, and I, I do my fair bit of moaning, as you know, but they moan about nothing. It's a really nice little walking track. 
He also said it was boring, didn't he, Michelle? He did, that was the word he used. It's certainly not boring. It's not boring, it's a beautiful view. It's a lovely little track. If the train was coming along here, it'd be even more exciting. So Michelle and I were just saying that uh, it looks like this was originally a train track. These are old, beautiful bridges or tunnels. So I think it would have been the original Slaggyford to Olsen track. And they put this little miniature train in. And you can see the W sign, I think it's to remind the, uh, the engine driver to uh, whistle. That's cool. I reckon this would be really nice if it was running. So here is a, a little station, it's called Lindley Holt. And I suspect that that's a halt in so much as it was a landowner that gave permission for the train to go through their land. And they often um, requested that there would be a halt. They could halt the train for their own purpose, you know, as a sort of private stop. So I'm guessing, oh look, Michelle. I, know, so I was just looking. Lovely picnic benches. And if it's wet, we can go in the halt. Oh, wow. This is possibly a very good stop for us, Michelle and I. But there's one big difference. Look at our feet. We are for the first time, as I said earlier, in our dry wear, in our wet weather gear.